All right, guys, well, let's get started. Good to see everyone. As usual, we are honored that you're here. We're excited to spend time with you um, going over our watershed culture. This has been such a fun series for me. This is week four, which is insane to think that this after this meeting, this will be halfway through our concepts. And one, I've been repeating them in my mind. I'll even bring them up in conversation yeah. of like the one that's been stood out to me the most was probably Mark's when he said that what's what's in your heart will come out in your in your actions. And I was thinking to myself, like, if you're if you're mentally negative, if you're focused on negative, yeah, most likely if you're met with confrontation, you're gonna be negative. And I was like, man, I, 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 I start you just start thinking these little nuggets that I've been I've been holding on to personally throughout this last four weeks. It's been impactful to me where I'm like, I don't know, it's, yeah. it's just it's been sticking with me more than just like we had another meeting today. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I don't know if anybody resonates. Can I see a show of hands? Has this been good? Has this been fruitful? Anybody? Awesome. All right. Points deducted. If you haven't raised your hand, I'm just kidding. Just that's not this kind of, that's not this kind of meeting. Don't worry. Uh, but I'm glad that you guys are all here. Um, this has been fruitful for us. And and I think as teachers, uh, how have you been? You've taught mm. a couple of them now. Has yeah. this been kind of fun to re-dive into it? It's interesting because you, you, you created these things, you know, 10 years ago mm -hmm. and you studied, you brainstormed, you, you talked about it forever. And it was, it was like our, you know, we pushed it and we're, we're involved in it. And then for me, you know, the years go by and I, we know them, but we're, I'm not intimately involved with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So mm -hmm. to get back in and really restudy these things and kind of go back to, you know, kind of our theme of back to basics, it's been fun. Like I've, I've, I've enjoyed really diving in and even getting, there's like layers to this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you start really kind of breaking down and studying. Yeah. And so I would encourage you guys, I, my wife and I on Thursday mornings get up <clears throat> and do a study. And I love Mark's talk so much out of the gate that I, I literally was like, honey, we're, we're, we're bringing in a guest speaker this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and I played it. And it's, it's so it's so impactful. Like th these things that we just think are about work yeah. that aren't. They're about life. They're about. And so my my wife is now like, OK, I got to remember. What is it again? It's the will control of the mind. The mind. Yeah, yeah. So we're working on here. Fun, funny enough, I, I think it's cute. But uh, H actually just said he's like, I, I showed my wife. I actually my son had a really negative attitude at like no joke. He like got mad and he was angry, yelled at us. And then I love my son, but he's a very emotional boy. And I was like, hey, Cameron, I want to show you a video. <laughs> I, I, I like so I sent a picture to uh, Mark. I was like, "See, Uncle Mark is teaching little Cameron," <laughs> and so I had my son like sitting in front of a screen watching uh, the video, and I was like, "Just, just take it and absorb it. It's really good." Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's once again. I I hope that, and that's one thing I've always loved about our culture is that it can be. I don't know if you think about like the depth of water, like a, maybe a well. It can be really shallow, mm -hmm. and like it, it can be where you just you understand the surface knowledge of it, and it's like this deep and your knowledge is this deep you're like i know what the definition is and that's all i really know or it can be like deep like a well yeah where it's like i have stories i want to share with you i have a i have an illustration i have a story from outside of our company let me pull from this well of knowledge or it could just be like a puddle that's only surface deep yeah and, then and so, it dries up quick and then and yeah or you forget yeah. <laughs> yeah and so that's one thing i think that this series has been really powerful to me it's like i'm like deepening the well of like, I can't wait to pull one of those out. If I ever need one, I'm like, oh, I remember yeah. this one. Oh, check this yeah. out. So anyways, that was a long introduction, but uh, I want to pass it off to these guys. It's going to be Mr. Grondon, who's going to be leading us first into this idea of consistency. Uh, I don't know if I've ever heard that before, but it's a uh, Grondon's going to unpack it for, now, for us now. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. Day two of our week-long uh training we're doing something yeah. tomorrow dan not not everyone was there yesterday but like uh majority like our we got salesforce guys on today guys salesforce thank you for being here um and the, but yesterday we had a manager meeting talking about in, uh, interviewing and uh hiring so some of us are like zoomed out but we, we're re-upping today <laughs> no i appreciate you guys joining and it's uh just just uh just a sense of gratitude that we're sending from from Arizona to you guys out in the field you guys are working so hard um Trevor by the way if you get a chance he's out there I think in Oklahoma or in Texas this week or vice versa do you know H if he's he's in, he's in Oklahoma I think he's returning tomorrow he's he's out there with some investors so if you guys get a chance to meet him meet the investors he's given a tour they're just nice guys they um They've given a lot of lot of um, a lot of money to to the cause to help us grow over the years, and they just wanted to go out there. They were there before we even built one site, and they wanted to come back and see what the remodels are. So, if you're in Oklahoma and you see Trevor, 
and Greg and Luke walking around, make sure you pop in and um, and shake their hand and tell me thanks for uh, thanks for believing in us. But we sure believe in you guys, that's for sure. Um, hey Dan, so we, we we're going through these cultural concepts and man, we love them. And uh, I told you guys before which ones are favorite, and you know, gosh, they're all so dear to our heart. But consistency is one of the early ones we started with. And uh, hey Dan, put up the 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 definition, our definition of consistency. Yes, sir. Um, we define it pretty, pretty basic, just every customer should receive the same experience every time. And so that's kind of where we started, um, back before we even opened up our first car wash, which was called clean freak brand here in Phoenix. But it's man, the, the idea was, can we wash 15,000 cars? That's what we, we thought we might be able to get to. Can we wash 15,000 cars in a month? And then can we wash the same, give the same experience 15,000 times every single month? And that was kind of the, the rallying cry. As we built this company and this training and the system and how we load and how we, we greet people and how we smile, are we able to duplicate that every single time? So all of our policies and procedures kind of got held up against that concept of consistency. Can we give every customer the same experience every time, which is a daunting task? And some companies can do that. Like McDonald's was the founder of consistency back when they started McDonald's in the in the 50s, I believe. They started it. Let me see here. I wrote it down. They started in 1948, 75 years ago. You know how many locations McDonald's has today? Anyone know? 40,000. I couldn't believe it. I looked it up. It's like 40,000 locations in 75 years, which is about one opening every single day for 75 years. Like that is so impressive, isn't it? And guess how many Chick-fil-A has? They have 2,700 locations. So like the gap between 40,000 and 2,700. But if you think of man, who, what company executed on consistency, you would obviously go to Chick-fil-A is by far better at execution on consistency than McDonald's is, but McDonald's been at it for 75 years. And they're saying, hey, we have 40,000 stores and it's an amazing product. So when we started building this business, we went to the McDonald's model, which is the Ray Kroc and said, if you're gonna build anything that's gonna sustain and last, you better have consistency wrapped all through that concept. And so um, that's kind of where we started. Um, do we still show Dan the give him the pickle video? I don't think we do. Anything. Nope. But you're, for, you're talking to a bunch of people that are probably like scratching their head, like give him the pickle. Like what? You guys, you, you can look for this. I don't know if you'll find it on YouTube or the internet, but you could write down give him the pickle. It was a video we used to show to every employee. H and I showed this at our prior company. Um, Twice a week, any employee that got hired had to watch this video. It was about 10 or 12 minutes long, but uh, he, he, it's a, it was a restaurant chain. And this guy kind of took this chain and this concept and he said, Hey, we're going to, uh, we're going to focus on four things. One of the things he talked about was consistency. And um, I probably watched this video with H in our, in our first company, 250 times because we'd watch it twice a week for, for seven years with every employee. And I just was on autopilot, but around the 250th time that I've watched this video, I remember sitting there and he, and he wrote consistency. And then he said, it might be the, the key to your business and it might be the, the secret to your life. And I remember him hitting that. I was like, wow, consistency. And I left that, that meeting after watching this video 200 plus times. I'm like, consistency. Why did he say it might be the secret to your business and the, the key to your life. And it was like, wow, that was, that's a bigger concept. And I started exploring this. This is, this is a several years before we started the, uh, the car wash chain. And it was like, man, it is powerful. And if you look at the, the chains like McDonald's and the super successful people, consistency is a very, very big part of their success. Okay. But I, I, I go here, you have to wrap consistency with, with a vision, all right? So what are we trying to accomplish with consistency, okay? And so if we know what, so I want to introduce a concept to you guys called the brand promise. What's our brand promise at Watershed? And uh, if you know, and, and if you take the brand promise or the standards, or and then you, then you 
implement consistency around that. So we first need to know the, the vision of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. I used to do business coaching and we would require all of our new clients to read the book E-Myth. If you want to read it, you can. It's it's all processes. It's a great book for entrepreneurs, but it's the capital E dash M Y T H, the myth of being an entrepreneur. And Michael Gerber, the author, tells a story about how he went to this new barbershop to get a haircut. And he walks in and it was this beautiful barbershop. It was brand new. It wasn't very busy. There was one customer in the chair and the, the owner says, hey, have a seat. I'll be with you in a minute. And he walks over and he gives them a, a wonderful, fresh brewed cup of coffee with, with a glass, you know, coffee cup. And, you know, there was there was just light music playing and it just had a wonderful masculine feel and scent and brand new leather chairs and, and the place felt great. And then he sits in the chair for his haircut and they give him a, um, I think they 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 said we're going to wash your hair first to get all the the gel out of your hair and then give you this great haircut and then at the end they massaged his shoulders and he goes it was an amazing he goes I'll never go anywhere else it was the best haircut ever he shows up four weeks later and it's busy because the place is is uh, is popular but he sits down and they go have a seat and they're uh, he's like okay and so he goes sits down and no one shows up with his he goes where's my cup of coffee. Where's my my new magazines? And then they they go, oh, if you want to if you want a beer, we have a, a you can go get, help yourself to a beer. And he's like, oh, that was kind of cool. But he was expecting coffee. So he goes over and he gets a, a beer. And then he goes when it was finally his turn to get his hair cut. They instead of washing his hair before they they cut his hair first and they go, we're going to wash after. And instead of doing a, a shoulder massage at the end, they did a scalp massage. And he goes, that individual experience was great. But he was like. It wasn't what they promised in my first experience. And so he uses this term. He's like, they broke a promise that I didn't ask them to make, but they set the standards. Here's the promise. And they're they're breaking the promise. And he goes, he he can't go back there because he doesn't know what he's going to get. Is it going to get coffee? Is it going to get beer? Is it going to wash his hair before or after? It's like, you have to be very clear on what your vision is, what you're trying to execute on. And then your job as managers is to uphold the the brand promises so we'll talk more about that in a second but um um it's it's an interesting concept and i love this idea of consistency but uh, some of us have been reading this book the compound effect if you guys want to um read it it's a great book to really go deeper on the one concept of consistency but the author darren hardy talks about he's a believer that um this is the ultimate key to success. And there's an entire book, story after story after story about people using consistency to accomplish their goals. Without consistency, you, you can't get there. And then you think about consistency in our, in our life, in, in topics like leadership and personal finance and in parenting, um, uh, spiritual growth, you know, just the thought of just reading a chapter every single day, where would that get you? Um, in business, the, using consistency with our business and health and, and marketing, it's it's all it's either working for us or against us. So we're using consistency regardless if we know that, right? So if you say, "Hey, I I'm not I can't do the I can't I can't go to the gym every day," well, then you're doing consistency on not going to the gym every day. You're you're very consistent about that right? We're very consistent about spending all of our money before the next paycheck. We're good about that. We're consistent about watching four hours of YouTube a day. We're good at that, right? And so what's working for us or against us, regardless, it's always in motion. And so now being conscious, and like we've talked about setting our RAS, what do we want to accomplish, not only personally and business? That's what I love about our cultural concept cards. All of these words should make us better people, better parents, better fathers, better wives, uh, better business partners, better employees. And also it should help us run a, run a smoother company. So I want you to employ this idea of consistency and then bring it, bring it, um, bring it to the forefront of our actions. And then you just know, does it work, man? It, it works. And you ask people like, uh, who are, who are our buff guys in our company, you know, the, the Mark and Vince and John Bond and Zach, does it work working out consistently all the time? Heck yeah, it works. You know, I, I think if you're, I, I remember one time I was with Mark, we were in Vegas and uh, we would share hotel rooms at these conferences together and we'd go out for uh, a steak dinner with the group. And then we might go out and have an adult beverage and a cigar after. 
And, uh, you know, you get back after having a drink and a big dinner and you just lay down in bed and you just like, man, I can't wait to sleep in. And I'd wake up at 630 and Mark's gone. 645, the door opens up. Mark's back. I was like, where the heck were you? He's like, I was at the gym. I'm like, I didn't even know we had a gym in this hotel. He's he's like at the gym. He's working out. He's that consistent on the process of working out. Like it's it's crazy. I'm like, we're meeting Dan and H for buffet here in about 20 minutes. We got to get going. Whoa! Is that whoa, why you whoa, want to win? Hey. Hey. Shots fired. And it's just it's just like, but this idea, right? He always he's consistent about exercising and working out. You know, our sales program doesn't work. If you if you make a good day of sales, but you ask Hiro and Little and Andy, man, does the sales program work? Heck yeah, it works. But you got to be consistently every single day. A best practice is out there pounding away every day, not for a month, not for two months, not for three months, but for for a year after year. And all of a sudden, you start seeing the residual effects of of um, of consistently coming to work. Right? You know, I, I look at guys who've had great careers with us. Uh, Dan and Justin and Willie, you guys have just been pounding away, showing up every single day, learning the business, and then you'll let your your career plan take its own action. I, I think if you asked Willie, are you happy where you're at today? He's like, yeah, I am. Did it take longer? It felt like it took longer, but it's it's a process you got to go through to learn, right? And you just need time. Consistency with time is a great is a great thing. Um. Let me see here. So why is consistency so hard um, to implement in our lives? And so the first thing I thought of it is we lack we lack vision. First of all, we just don't know what we're trying to accomplish. Right. The second thing is we want results faster. Right. And so I know for myself, it's like you, you put in a good a week or two weeks at the gym and we just don't see the results. Something happens uh, when you take consistency and you keep going for for a long long period of time right i know for myself it's like you get on the scale that's what i want the scale to move but with with consistency you just have to go through the process of exercising watching your diet all the time and in business it's going to be the same thing one great raving fan experience stacked with another one and another one and another one and another one we will have great sites every single site should have the same experience right it works every single time. Um, why doesn't it work? We we always focus on the outcomes, not the process. You need good discipline to have consistency, right? You have to, you have to be careful of those positive feelings. We only want the outcomes rather than the struggle of the journey. So be focused on the, the journey every single day. That's where excitement comes in when you could when you can execute on something for a multiple period of weeks and months and years. The effect of consistency will will show up in your life, and it's it's beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, um, we've been talking lately about stacking these principles. So when you stack consistency plus excellence plus a vision of where you want to go, and you incorporate some accountability in your life, maybe some coaching, some motivation, it always equals success. And so take a moment, figure out what you're trying to accomplish personally in your life. And say, okay, if I if I show up every day, and I and if we look at the gym example, and I'm going to give a hundred percent for thirty minutes, right? Set your timer, go to the gym for thirty minutes every day. What can you accomplish? Be excellent. Have a vision of what you're trying to get to. Have some accountability. Have your friends say, hey, hold me accountable that I showed up every day to the gym. If you need to hire some coaching on how to use the exercise equipment, invest in that get some motivation through through music or, or whatever you need, that will equal success. Work it through. And we're, we're going to take that same model and apply it to our, to our business as well. We're going to show up every single day. We're going to be excellent at what we're doing. H will talk about excellence for perfection. We're going to have a vision of what the customer experience is going to look like. We're going to have accountability with our team. We're going to get coaching on how to execute on this. We're going to have daily motivation from you guys, our managers, all these sites will be successful if we if we do this, okay? So I want to talk to you about this this idea of practically bringing it to to a head. And um, if you understand the power of consistency and you understand our vision, what you now need to understand is what is it that we're promising to our customers, 
Okay. What's our brand promise? And um, I want you guys to walk through this idea of when someone makes a uh, sales, one of our sales guys makes a sale and someone buys a membership, what are they really buying? Okay. Um, and one of you guys want to walk through this exercise. We can walk through this together. Any volunteers? Are any volunteers? They're, they're buying our service. Okay, Andy, walk through this. You make a sale. Yes, sir. What exactly are they buying? Be very practical. I spent $20. Mm -hmm. What do I what do I want for my $20? Practically. Practically. So they want a a great wash. Yeah, they want a clean car. Yes. They want the bird poop off. Yes. What else do they want? Um, they want the car just clean. Yeah, after they, want it, they want it dry when they exit the tunnel. Correct. Yeah, what else do they want? And Practice. when they when they go to the if they're gonna use the vacuum bay. They want to make sure the vacuums work and yep. everything's stocked up. Yep. Yep. They want the trash cans emptied. Tire shine. Correct. Yeah. So they want they want the practical part of their business. What else are, have we promised as a company? What else have we promised that they're going to get? Now we um so we're we're trying to change that because the customer has so many other options, so many other car washes they could choose from. Yeah. So we try we try to put in that smell from the beginning, that wave. Hey, we're here to serve you on, Hey, yeah, you could get a wash, but Hey, how about we make this a, uh, uh, a thing where this is your happy place. We want you to feel good. So, yeah. so you, you said it there, they want the smile. Are you guys as managers, are we smiling at every single car? Cause we've promised that to the customers. Cause when they buy it from Andy, Andy smiles, everyone's in a good mood. Are they going to get that every single time they show up? Are they going to get a smile? or most of the time, or some of the time, or on occasion. Your job as managers is to make sure that, that we're delivering not only on the quality of the wash, like Andy said, but then on the promises, which is the smile. What other things? So they're going to get a, uh, what did you say, a smile and a, a thumbs up? A smile, the great service, thumbs up, um, a wave, um, the consistent loading, um, great wash afterwards. Yeah, so it's 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 bumper to bumper. It, it's it's uh, you know office to curb. It's it's all of that. You have to know exactly what we're promising, and then the consistency. You have to execute on that every single car as best you can. Okay, and so it's very very important. So the other thing you guys have to do as managers. So let me roll through this. You have to understand the principles of consistency, which we talked about. Understand the vision. Understand what we're promising. Watershed's promised right? And then you have to teach this vision. You have to teach this promise to your, to your staff. This is why it's important. This is what we're trying to do, right? No one has to do it, but if you work for us, you have to do it, right? You don't have to. This is what you're, you're saying in lieu of this, this paycheck you're going to get or being part of this company. This is the promise that we're going to give to our customers and to our members, right? Then you have to hold accountable and defend the process. So when someone's not doing it, you just be like, ah, geez, I, I told them, I told them twice. I told them three times. They're not doing it. Your job as managers is to hold the process accountable to make sure it's done, right? To remind them about the principles of consistency, the principles of, of raving fan, right? Really understand what the brand promise is and then execute on this daily with consistency, okay? And then what's not your responsibility? The results, if, if, if customers come in, if, if uh, the, the sites grow or not, as long as you're executing on the principles of consistency, the results should take care of itself. But we don't want to focus on the scale. We want to focus on, on the diet and the exercise. We want to focus on the execution of this brand, right? And so back in the early days, we had we did marketing every single day. We would market, we would market a hundred um flyers every single day and we just did not stop for four years right occasionally you might you might miss a day something might happen but we would company-wide we were pretty good about that makes sense and so i'll end with this final story if you guys ever studied or read zig ziglar he has a great story about consistency but he was uh kind of the first kind of motivational author i ever read and my kind of intro to business books uh, but he tells this great story that in uh, he wrote a book and on the first page of the book, he said um, he talked about his wife 
and his kids and his height and his weight. And he wrote down, I'm 165 pounds. And then he kind of finished his whole book and he sent it off. And he had to have the, the kind of the final draft to the editor by January or February. So the book launch could be in, in August. And they, they read the first page and they called Zig and they said, hey, uh, thanks for the book. We love it. You're great. The problem is there might be a typo. It says you're 165 pounds and you're not. You're 195. And um, he goes, oh, I'll be 165 by the launch of the book. He goes, because if you're not 165, you will not sell one copy because it's all about integrity, your whole book. And he goes, I'll be one, one, 165. And so he, they, they go on and they work on the book. And so he goes to his wife and his kids. He's like, I have a problem. I'm 30 pounds overweight and I'm 50 years old. And so his wife, so loving, she goes out and buys him this blue sweatsuit. You can envision this guy in the seventies with this big white stripe coming up his leg, you know, those sweatsuits and he zips <laughs> it up and, you know, I'm, I'm envisioning this headband and he goes, I got these big blue sneakers, but he's never really run before. And he goes out day one and puts on his sweatsuit and his tennis shoes and he can only get to the end of the block. And then he, he returns home. And then the next day he gets up, puts on his sweatsuit puts on his tennis shoes and he goes to the end of the block plus two mailboxes. And then he can only do that. And he returns home the next day. He goes to the uh, halfway around the street. And then the next day he goes three quarters of the way. The next day he makes it all the way around the house. And he's been doing this for seven to 10 days. And he finally makes it around his block. And he, he runs inside. He gets his kids out of bed. If you can imagine these high school kids, he's like, everyone come downstairs. I got amazing news. And they run downstairs and they're like, what's up, dad? What happened? He's like, I made it around the block. And his kids are like, I'm back to bed. Like, this, that's not that exciting, right? But for him, it was a big deal. The next day, he goes around the block plus two mailboxes, around the block plus four, around the block plus, and then he makes it to a half a mile, and then three quarters of a mile, and a mile, and then a mile and a half, and two miles, and two and a half, and three, and then four, and then five, and six, and seven. And he's like shedding weight, and he's eating healthy. And everyone sees him. They just know every single day he's going to be out there working out. And then by the, the final, uh, he starts traveling and he shows up at colleges and everyone hears this story. And they're like, I want to work out with you. I want to run with you. He's like, I'll be at the, the library tomorrow at seven. Anyone want to go running? They can. He starts running with these colleges, these college kids. And these college kids can only run a mile or two miles and they start dropping off. And he's running seven, eight, nine miles every single day. He ends up losing uh, like 35, 40 pounds. He's 162 pounds by the launch of the book. And he, he just talks about the power of knowing the vision of where we're going and then the execution of that, having his wife and his kids hold him accountable. And it's just a beautiful story. Of, but he didn't care about, he knew he had to get there, but he had to do the work ahead of time to get there. And so we're going to have that same success with our businesses as well. We're going to be focused on the marketing, on the execution, on the raving fan, the businesses will take care of itself. Okay. All we have to do as managers is focus on the, um, focus on the power of consistency. Okay. Hey, Scotty, Scotty, can I chime in real quick? Yeah. There was, I, I wrote down two notes um, just to share. One was, um, you, it's really the, the concept I think, right. Of Without consistency, we can take something that is good. Without consistency, it now becomes a, a bad thing, right? NBA. So I remember you said one time it was so eye-opening with consistency. We we had a we had an employee who was like super stoked about um, they're like, man, when I have downtime, I just run out to the bug prep station, I start prepping people's cars like for them. And like I, my first, my first thought was like, gosh, that's I love it. Like, how cool is that? Yeah. And I remember, Scotty, you chimed in and you, you said, well, hang on, hang on a second. Like, that is good for that individual. But can we do that consistently? Because if that per person pulls in, they just bought a fast pass from Andy, who's smiling. And, you know, they, they come in and they get someone bug preps their car on Tuesday and Wednesday, they come in and that person's not there to bug prep. Now what? We yeah. weren't consistent. Now their experience yeah. is off. And it so could be serving people is great because that, that customer needed help. They were elderly. But if we start vacuuming cars, we've seen that before. All of a sudden we're vacuuming cars. It's just not a duplicatable process for us. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one I think that was big for our company was our dash wipes. With our dash wipes, we, we had, right? We Some had, people don't even know what that is. Yeah. So 
when you would enter into the car, no. you enter into the car wash, we had prepackaged dash wipes that we would hand out to, to the customers. And like before we load them, like they'd be coming in, you'd be loading like, oh, hey, then you, we would literally hand them a dash wipe. So I'm telling you, no one really knows that. Right. So all of you, uh, everybody on this call, we used to give away these little clean freak branded dash wipes and we'd have them roll down their window and here you go. And then they'd be like, thanks, can I have four of them? And you're like, oh yeah, sure. And you yeah. go run and get four of them. And and it was it was a nuisance at, at many times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they would use that to wipe down the insides of the car. So we said, man, what a great add to our business. People are going to love it. And guess what? People did love it. The problem was they loved it when they had it. Mm-hmm. But then when we didn't have it or the person wasn't there to hand it, where's my dash wipe? And then some people would busy. give four and some people would give two. And it, something that was intended for good, we actually said, man, we're actually causing more frustration now because we're not nailing it consistently. So as a business, we said, let's just pull that away. So that's um, exactly the brand promise. They, the customer is confused. Am I getting dash wipes? Am I not? Am I getting four? Do I do I have to roll my window down? So we were yeah. here you go. Hey, Andy, uh, Andy's got one. Oh, look at that. Yeah, let, me, let me pin Andy real quick. Where's my, hey, did you steal? Okay, Andy, Andy, <laughs> Andy where'd you steal that? You got to be consistent, guys. Come on. <laughs> awesome. like, I'm still giving those. I'm still giving those away here now. No, no, no. Um, I, I went to Arizona and uh, I stopped by a Clean Freak site and uh, I got some dash wipes. Nice. Hey. Yeah. Trevor, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a special guest on Jeff McCool's call. Did you see that? I no. probably mute. Trevor, can you hear us? Trevor, hi, yeah. Trev. <laughs> there he is. What's, What's up, guys? Hey, What's How's up, going? dude? Good. We're touring Oklahoma. What? Anyways, yeah. I saw you wanted to say hi. Yeah, good to see you. You ca- you caught us in the middle of our manager meeting talking about our I- culture. I was going to see if Ron didn't notice us, but I didn't want to interrupt. Dude, he was on. He was on a roll, man. Going next. (laughs) That's great. So we're at Northeast Twenty Third and Northwest Twenty Third. I mean, and uh, I forget where we're heading next, but we're hitting all of them. Go clean your sites, guys. Yeah, they look great. Everybody, leave the call. Go, go, go. (laughs) Yeah, someone already got the heads up because they're all really nice. So. Uh I think no, that's, the team. that's the team, that's, Trevor. That's consistency, Trevor. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Good. Let me mute them real quick. All right, cool. Um, sorry, cut you off. No, we're good. Scotty, anything else on consistency? No, that's it. Great job, man. That that's that, it's such a good reminder. Oh yeah. Does anybody have any questions for for Scott before we move on to H? Awesome. Mm. Oh, was her hand? Was her mm, Andy? Andy oh, no. no, I was just gonna just uh, say like no. I, I just I think consistency is very huge for us, especially it makes us um, more different than the other car washes around. Uh, okay. Especially. Sorry. No, no. Especially like if we just uh, even the small stuff, you know, the smile, the wave, oh, yeah. um, just the very small stuff, the loading, the the loading, just very consistent with, about it. Just make sure when we're in the back, the ten foot rule. It just all plays a part. It's just amazing. And I love how I, I got some a few notes on why it's hard. And like, even for me, like the gym, why is it so hard for me to be consistent? Like I'll be consistent for a week or two, but I don't have a vision. I don't have a vision. I don't have a goal of my like gym wise. Um, so I was like, oh, wow, I got that for my personal life. So that's pretty cool. And I, and I was thinking, Andy, when I was looking at this call, I see you guys like Taylor, Nico, Jairo and, and Trey. I, when I think about sales, I see little on the call when sales sales is all about consistency. If you come in and every day you're changing up your pitch, mm. you're going to suck at sales. Like you, it's just, and I, I, and I've seen, it's gonna, I see Taylor. I see a bunch of our guys that, that like they have it all the time. That's what they do. That's what they deliver. And that's why they're able to put up the numbers they, they do because they don't just like, Hey, I feel like changing it up today. You know, I'm going to do something different. It's like, it's like, that can be the, that can be the de- detrimental to the sales game. And so, uh, for all you Salesforce guys, I love you, and you guys are consistent, and that's how you get consistent sales. And I, I, I'll, I'll wrap it up by saying this: I, Scotty touched on it real quick, but I think it's so important that as leaders, we have to be consistent in confronting inconsistencies in our yeah. in our staff. Right, not being afraid to say, "Hey, don't forget to smile." Hey, you know, clean up the clean up the loading or oh yeah we let it go by letting it go it's it, it's validated Dude, put your phone away yeah oh so 
Um, yeah, all those yeah. super important inconsistencies. Yeah. So now H is going to take us into perfection versus excellence. We got 22 minutes and he's going to kill it during the 22 minutes. <laughs> Oh, I, was I thought it was 99.45. I, I was going to have seven, seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes. let's go. That's all I need, actually. That's all I need. That's all I need. I can do it. Um, thanks, guys. Hey, really quick, just want to shout out to um, the Abilene team and San Angelo team. Guys, it was so fun just to be able to hang out with you the last couple of days and what you guys are doing out there and um, the investment that you guys are making. You got great, great team, great staff. Um, Courtney, you and your crew are, are awesome. You got just really yeah, yeah. really amazing Kenny Jeff you Kenny. guys are really doing something special there yeah so it was just really really a pleasure to hang out with you guys so thank you for spending some time with me uh okay perfection versus excellence so uh it's funny I started really diving in I'm like man there's so many different directions to go with perfection versus excellence even though it's a very simple simple topic so um Perfection versus excellence. We define perfection versus, oh, look at you. We define perfection versus excellence as we do not expect perfection, but we strive for excellence. So we want to strive for excellence. So the question I was pondering is, is hey, H, why would you want us, why wouldn't you want us to do things perfectly if we could? If we can do things perfectly, why would you not want that? Why would you want to say, hey, be excellent and don't worry about being perfect? And what I would say is there's a cost to perfection. Okay. There's a cost to being perfect or attempting to be perfect. Now I'm going to talk about work and tangible things that might be perfect as opposed to, are we as individuals, can we be perfect as individuals? Right. Um, if you, if you think you can be perfect, if you think you are perfect, I think all we have to do is if you if you if you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, interview just them. ask. It's like, hey, <laughs> go ahead. You can be honest. Am I perfect, Alyssa? Am I and, perfect? <laughs> it's it's probably it's probably as simple as that. If any of your spouses or boyfriends, girlfriends say you're perfect, call me. I want to talk to them. Um, so so there's 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 differences there, right? Um, so can we be perfect? And why wouldn't why wouldn't we want you to be perfect inside of work. And, and I'd, I'd suggest there's a cost to being perfect. So I'm going to give you kind of the four costs of being perfect, if if you don't mind. All right. So being a perfectionist as a leader, the number one thing can hinder your ability to get things done. Okay. So it'll hinder your ability to get things done. If you expect things to be done perfectly, you're, you will never be... Um, you will never be able to complete a task because there's always going to be something else I could do better. Well, it's not quite there. It's not right. Where and I, it's funny. I was I was going over this. I was like, man, we're we've been working on this this employee handbook for a long time, and it, it's it's a big project. But as we were coming down to the 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 end, it was like, man, the more we just kept going back and forth, I could continue to find like, ah, there's a little something there we need to change. And, and, and I I finally said, you know what? It's okay. I, I'm I'm I found myself being guilty of that. Like I'm waiting for it to be perfect and I'll ne we'll never cross the finish line. So it was just a matter of, all right, let's get it out. And when errors come across, we'll, we'll adjust. So um, number one, being a perfectionist can hinder your ability to actually get things done. Mm -hmm. The second thing um, I would say you guys, what you, uh, whatever you expect from yourself, if you, if you're the type of person that um, I want things done right and perfect and, if that's what you expect of yourself, then there's a high chance that you're going to expect that from your team. That is going to be your your standard. So as a leader, you will expect what you expect for yourself is probably what you expect out of others. Um, and so being a perfectionist as a leader can set your ex you can set the expectations too high for others. So that's the second one. The second cost is that you can set expectations too high. For those around you and those expectations more than likely the people around you probably can attain it to the level at which a perfectionist would want it would want it attained um and guys when you put when you have this expectation on your team to do things perfectly you don't give them the opportunity to make mistakes to uh, to fall short to mm -hmm. um you know to get things corrected so be cautious of that. Don't set your expectations too high for others. Okay. 
the third thing, the third cost of trying to be a per, trying to be be perfect or do things perfectly, um, and you may be hesitant to make a decision because you don't want to get it wrong. So I don't know if there's any of you guys out there that are like that. And I, I would actually say I fall in that category. I, re- I recognized recently that I'm a processor. For me to make a decision, I need to take it all in. I need to calculate it. I need to like, what are the pros and the cons, you know? And then to actually make a decision, I'm trying to narrow that perfect scenario down to say, here's the right answer. And I recognize that about myself. And so in part of decision-making, I realized, okay, I, I have to be careful. I have to, uh, I don't want to spend too much time. I want to make the best decision I can yeah. and then give myself a little bit of grace if it's the wrong decision. And so I want to give myself some grace if it's the wrong decision. And I want to make sure we want to empower others to make decisions as well and understand that they're going to make mistakes as well. So first one is hinders your first cost to trying to do things perfectly hinders your ability to get things done. Second cost is that you set your expectations too high for others. The third cost is that you you may hesitate to make a decision because you're trying to get it done perfectly. And then the fourth cost is being a perfectionist as a leader mm-hmm. can hinder your ability to delegate things to others. That's good. Yeah. And this, I think, is where as leaders, this is, if I had to kind of prioritize it, I'd probably say this is the, the most impactful, is we see it time and time again. Some of you are experts in certain areas, right? You do things unbelievably well. And I know as a leader, Mark talked about delegation not that long ago. And it, it's uh, he talked about how you know, in in his mind, he knew the right way to get it done. He had his standards, so he would he would get it done the right way. And he said, "Man, I, he realized if he could delegate things out, and it got to eighty percent of where Mark could do it, he said that would be good enough, right?" Um, and that's the excellence. Mark may have been able to do something perfectly, but in order to in order to delegate and get more stuff done. Um, he had to delegate it out and accept that maybe that person wouldn't do it quite as much. So if you guys are out there and you are hesitant to give something to your team because they won't do it as good as you, or maybe you have a fear that, to be honest, that maybe they'll do it better than me, um, you got to let that go. I see you, Christian. I see you smiling. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you are striving for perfection and you don't delegate, um, that's going to hinder hinder your you. Okay. And also the growth of others. Amen. The growth of others. Because sure. if you only expect perfection and you only strive for that, your team is actually going to become so gun shy because they know that you need it to be done the way you only want it done. It actually hinders them from creativity. It hinders them from the fear or really the fear of failure is becoming more present. Like, yeah, yeah there's a lot to this idea of perfection. I know probably a lot of us struggle with this idea. I need to be perfect. Like what's that? There's that one, uh, uh, this like this once the perfect scenario is not happening, I give up. Like this thing's a uh, it's yeah. a waste. Like I don't even know what I'm doing this for anymore. It's not perfect, and it's like that, that's a it's a hindrance to yeah. our lives if we try to be perfect. And I love what you said with creativity. Mm. Sometimes you de- if you delegate something out, someone may have a different view or different vi- a vision of something mm-hmm. and do it a little differently. And it's actually what you thought was perfect. This yeah. person has now um, it's good. flourished with so. Yeah, make sure you delegate. Make sure you show grace when other people don't get it done quite the way you do, and and be okay because there is there's an impact on your um, on your time there. Where uh, yeah, let me share share a screen. Oh, yeah. Where was that? Oh, hold on a second. Um, it was the keynote there. Go to the first slide first. Mm-hmm. Can you guys all see? Make it bigger. I'm working on it. Can you guys all see that? Yep. Andy, yeah. give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Um, so perfection versus excellence, right? We're 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 saying strive for excellence, guys. Don't don't you you know don't don't strive for perfection strive for excellence because there is a time and an effort that has to get put into being or not to being being perfect but executing on something perfectly mm-hmm. versus the the quality of your work so here you're going to see this this graph right here's their quality of work versus the time it's going to take now here's what's really important here's a graph showing all right if 
I actually have these as kind of like, let's just call these half hour increments of your time as leaders. Your time is valuable. Uh, if, if it takes two hours to get to excellence, right? And here's where excellence is. And you continue, you continue your efforts and, and this is where perfection lands. So here's your quality of work, right? You got this curve that says, all right, it's going to take me some time to get things done and get it done really, really well. And boom, you hit excellence here. Good two hours. That's a long, that's a lot of work. Let's just call it two hours. Yeah. And, and you did, did a great job, but man, no, it's not quite done. I, I, I could do, I can do better. I can do better. Here's what you have. Here's the visual that I want you guys to see in time and effort and why excellence is totally acceptable. And that's what we're striving for in our company. If you look at the, if you look at the time it takes to get to excellence in this example, let's call it two hours. Well, look at the delta here. Look at, it takes another two hours just to go this much, this much further to perfection it takes another two hours, right? So in order for you to get something done in this, in this scenario perfectly, it would have taken you four hours. Now imagine if we say, hey, let's, let's stop at excellence and be okay with excellence. And you're delegating out or, or you know, uh, yeah, delegating out, let's say. You could have two major projects done in, in an excellent manner, a totally acceptable manner by the company and by the ownership team. You could have two excellent or two projects done excellently by the time you would have perfected one. So the, the, the time and effort is just not... Mm worth that so i don't know something just popped in my mind and, and sorry if i cut you off you know but this reminds me of a doing a uh, a site inspection i know a lot of us have to clean the chemical rooms right the equipment room the, it's funny how we could get so hyper focused let's say on a piece of equipment or the tops of the brushes and it's not perfect so i need to get to the top of the arch behind the area i got my toothbrush out and i started cleaning it all and you spend four hours detailing a motor in the reality, that's not what we were looking for. We actually just wanted you to clean off all the dirt and grime off the posts and making it so it's a functional. It's like, so sometimes I, I could relate to that as a site manager when I was doing site inspections. Like you get hyper-focused and you want it to be perfect because you want, you want a perfect score. And then it's like, wait, I could have done a whole other arch. I could have yeah. had my team working on a different area yeah. than what I was being too focused on one area. And so you could apply that however you like, but that just reminded me of a site inspection. Yeah. Where you try to go for that perfection. So I, I think it's like managers. If I, if I look at this chart and I say, hey, if this is a project I can delegate out, I can either do it myself and have it done perfectly in four hours, or I can delegate it out, have the project done in two hours. And guess what? Now I can spend two hours investing my time into the next level of leaders. I, I can use this time, which is so valuable to invest in something equally or maybe even more important. Scotty, were you going to say something? Remember Craig Grishel's teaching on Getmo? Oh, yeah. I remember Getmo. That's what Dan was just sharing. Share Good that. enough to move on. Say it again, Dan. Yeah. So Getmo, I, I would encourage you guys to write this down because it's a nice little uh, mm -hmm. compliment to perfection versus excellence. It's G-E-T-M-O. And Greg Grishel has a beautiful podcast on this. And I have had to apply this in my life in so many ways, especially with my wife, because like sometimes I'll try to make something perfect. And she's like, Dan, you spent six hours working on that. It's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so it's good enough to move on. And I promise you, there's freedom in Gitmo. Um, I don't know. The graph illustrates it perfectly. Yeah. But it's, you know, hey, good enough. Move on to the next arch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think we, we don't want to be in a place where, um, yeah, we want people to be motivated. We, we, we're not saying to be lazy. Nope. We're not, you know, we're saying, hey, make sure. For those of you who expect too much from people, just remember people probably can't live up to your 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 perfect view. Yeah. So we want grace, we want forgiveness inside of all that stuff. Um, I, how, how am I doing on time? So, uh, and then just think about it, guys. How how our lives? If you could picture your perfect day as a manager, you would get on site and sit in your car for five minutes and. <laughs> prep your day and you'd have your list and you'd walk in and you'd be a breeze. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. You'd have your Starbucks and, and, uh, but the reality is we don't live in a world of perfection. The minute you walk in your, you know, you got your agenda, here's what I'm going to accomplish today. And guess what? There's a sticky note on your computer that says this happened last yeah. night. And then 
the customer comes in, you get derailed. So we just don't live in a world um, of perfection and we don't want our leaders to, um, to be there either. There is this fun story that I heard about um, astronauts and what they expect. So th it said there's 12,000 people apply to become an astronaut and only 10 uh, will qualify. They can put these, these physical, you know, re regiments and tests and, and mental tests. And so they will, they will lock them in a room for eight hours and do mathematical, like they call it like quantum mechanics and physics problems. And, and 12,000 people do this. Uh, and they said out of the 12,000, like only five, th there are people that actually get perfect. Every mm -hmm. answer correct based on breaking down quantum. I don't even know what the heck. I don't even have to spell quantum. I think it's a TV show. Oh, well, quantum mechanics. Uh, okay. Anyways. Um, and so these, these, these people will leave the room and that, you know, they'll say, Hey, you got every single answer, right? And they're like, yes, it's great. And they're like, thank you for applying. They <laughs> say, we don't want people that Oh, really? They don't want perfection because when you're in when you're in space with however many tons of fuel strapped on a rocket, it ain't going to be perfect out mm. there. You're going to have to have some grace. You're going to have to have for you're going to be able to think mm. there's trials all around you. So perfection is not something that even NASA wants. They want they mm. want you to be able to to, to live in that world of, of yeah. imperfection, to yeah. be able to you know think and navigate quickly. So that's cool. Um Guys, so listen, I think I'll wrap it up, but I think that the bottom line of perfection versus excellence is that we know that no one is perfect, um, but as a company and as leaders, if we can stay motivated uh, and you and your team can stay motivated and have a desire to do well, then you can shoot for perfection. And if you fall short, you're hitting excellence. So, uh, you know, give us your best, have your employees give us your best, make sure you show grace to your to your staff when they don't quite you know, meet maybe your level of expectation, coach them, love on them, work for them, uh, work with them, be encouraging um, and accept, accept excellence so that we can ultimately, I think, be, be more productive. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I throw out something? I Thanks. actually, I almost saw it in your notes. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait, flawless without flaw. I love that. One thing I want everybody to, to this one thing that's been near and dear to my heart, because I am not perfect. And all y'all that I've ever talked to know I'm not perfect. But one thing I've always really hung to and like I really enjoyed it and the idea of is, is uh, clung to, not hung to, um, is this idea is failure is not fatal. And that has been so good for me and because I know I'm not perfect, but I know that the company I work for is not expecting that. So I know when I fall short or when I fail, I know it's not fatal. And I can and I can rest in that. And the resting does not produce laziness. The resting uh, that resting in that truth actually produces like a trust and a, uh, a confidence and a um, a loyalty in a way mm. of where I'm not scared of failing because I know it's not fatal because my company doesn't make it seem like I need to be perfect. Yeah. So I don't know. There's something it produces something where it's like I have a, a certain uh, confidence or or um yeah I don't know. There's something to that where. I, you act differently when you know it's not fatal. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dan, can you say that again? Yeah, fa failure is not fatal. And um, I think that's the fear that sometimes we have as perfectionists or you think you need everything to be perfect is that you're really scared that if it's not, uh, what's mm -hmm. going to happen to me? Yeah, you don't want to get it wrong. Yeah. You don't want to get it wrong. We and it's, yeah, you, you can't thrive in that. Yeah. Um. So, guys, thank you so much for teaching. H and, and Grandin, thank you guys so much. And once again, I just want to, I'm just always in, impressed by these, of how prepared these owners are being for this. And I know it sounds silly, but like, that's humbling to me where it's not like they're just rolling out of bed and saying, Hey, let me teach this real quick. I'm going to throw something together because I learned this. Was, I created this. Let me just throw it up. Uh, they're prepared and they have been just investing into us. And so um, I want you guys to kind of take that humbly, but then also be like, what am I going to do with this stuff? And it's because it's, it's great what we're learning. So thank you to Gron and thank you to H uh, as owners. We are so grateful for you guys and, and, uh, and teaching us. I'm speaking for the whole group. Our pleasure. <laughs> Awesome. Guys, thank you so much. Next week, we got uh, Last and Raving Fan. I don't know who the speakers are. I have to look at my list, but Last and Raving Fan are going to be some fun ones. Um, Raving Fan is what we built this business on in many ways and, mm. and how we continue to grow this business. 
And last, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else is more um, productive for us to do and how we engage customers. And so um, it's a it's going to be a fun week. So I'm excited to dive in. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day, y'all. And yeah. uh, have fun in the field. Go kill it and uh, have a good day.